In this example, we're going to show you how to take the model of the Magic Beans coffee sign and we're going to walk through the various stages to create the toolpath to cut the finished sign that you can see here. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. So from the Magic Beans project folder, we're going to open the Magic Beans 3D modeling. If we can just go ahead and tile our windows vertically so we can see the 2D and the 3D view. And you'll see here this is the model that we finished off with in the last session. So we're going to look at machining this efficiently whereby we're going to use flat material. We pretty much have a flat sign and the only areas that require 3D machining is the dish in the centre, this recessed area here and the actual border of the outer part of our sign. Now when we 3D machine anything what happens is the tool center cuts up and to the vector boundary. Now if we take a look at our border, okay, so when we come to 3D machine the border we're going to cut from this vector to this vector here. Okay, so we won't have a problem with this side, the center of the tool will come up to here and then this bit will be our flat material. However, when we come to cut the actual side of the border as we get further down, the centre of the tool will stop here. Okay, so we won't actually be cutting the entirety of that border. So what we need to do is we need to look at creating an extra vector for this outer border to make sure that the tool can roll all the way down the outside of the part. So we're going to look at offsetting this vector. So let's just use this option here to zoom to the drawing limit. And with that vector selected, we're going to use the offset option. Now offset that outwards, and we're going to offset that outwards by 0.15, so a little larger than the radius of the tool that I plan to use. And then we could use the offset option, and you'll see it's created that there for us. So let's just close that down. So now what we could do is we could go and switch over to the toolpaths tab. So let's use this icon here, that will just undraw the drawing tab and open up the toolpaths tab there. And the first thing that we must do is set up our material to match that up with our physical setup. So let's use the set option there. So we're going to work with one inch thick material. XY position, I'm going to put that in the lower left hand corner. I'm going to set our Z0 off the material surface. The model position and material, we want to push that all the way up. As I said, we're working with flat material, so we want this model all the way up to the top. So this area, all the flat areas in our sign, is the actual material surface. Okay, then you just check over your rapid gaps above the material, home and start position, ensure they're all safe. Then we could go ahead and press OK. So the first toolpath we're going to look at doing, and that's the profiling for the hanging holes that we've got here. So we're going to select this circle, shift and select this circle here, so they're both selected. And we're going to come over to the profile toolpath option. Okay, so the start depth for this is going to be zero. We want to cut all the way through our material, so we know we set that to one inch. Now, if you couldn't remember, what you set your material thickness to, you can press Z and then equals and then the software will input that material thickness value in there for you. Then we need to choose a tool, okay, so I'll go to the select option here, pick a tool, in this case I do actually want to use the quarter inch end mill here. Check over the settings ensuring that they're safe and appropriate for my particular application. Okay, so I can see here that we're going to cut that in eight passes. Now, I feel that the material that I'm using, I could look at altering the pass depth just to reduce the number of passes here. So we're going to use the edit option, and that just enables me to edit the tool for this toolpath only. So here we're going to up our pass depth to a quarter of an inch. I feel that's safe for the sort of material that I'm using. And then I could just go ahead and press OK. And we can see now that that's going to cut that in four passes. And that pass depth won't change for the tool in the actual tool database. It's only changed for this toolpath that we're using as we use the edit option. 
Let me choose how we machine the vectors, whether that's outside of those vectors, inside or on. In this case, I'd like to machine inside of those vectors, so we'll use the inside option. We go down to the bottom of the form, we could give this a name, we're going to call this one profile holes and then press calculate and we can see the actual toolpath there in the 3D view. So now we could go ahead and preview that toolpath, okay, so we can see those holes and if I wanted to we do have the option to delete the waste area whereby we just simply double click. So I could double click on this hole here, double click on the waste material in this hole there and you'll see we're left with the actual hanging holes that we've got here. Okay, so let's just put that in Z and then we'll just close out of the preview toolpath form. So now we're going to look at doing our 3D roughing pass. So we need to select all the vectors for the 3D part. So we're going to select that outer boundary vector that we offset earlier. Shift and select the inner vector. Shift and select the vector for the recess, the other vector for the recess, and the vector for the dish itself. Let's come over to Toolpath Operations. We're going to use the 3D Roughing Toolpath. So the first thing we need to do is select a tool. Okay, so quarter inch tool is the actual tool I'd like to use. Let's have a look at the actual settings for this tool using the edit option. Okay, I'm happy with those so we could just go ahead and press OK. Okay, then we need to choose our machine and limit boundary. So we're going to use the vectors that we've got selected here. Boundary offset, we do not need an offset in this case. Uh, as we're working with negative shapes for the dish and the recess, and then the boundary, we already created that offset uh, for the outer vector, so make sure we put a zero boundary offset in there. Then we move on to the machine allowance. Okay, so we're just going to put in 0 0.03 in there, and this will just apply a skin of material to leave on the surface after the 3D roughing toolpath is finished. And this just really makes sure that we have some material left for the finishing toolpath to cut. And so it just keeps the roughing tool away from the finished surface to make sure that it doesn't chip it. Let me move on to the roughing strategy. In this case we're going to do a Z level strategy where we're going to raster in X, profile last, and then we could just give that a name. We're just going to call this one 3D roughing, press calculate. Okay, so we can see the toolpaths there, and then we could just simply go ahead and preview that toolpath. So let's just maximize the 3D view and take a look at the part. So you can see where it's hogged away at the 3D areas. Okay, so I'm quite happy with the results we've got there. Let's just put that back in C, and we'll just close out of the preview toolpaths and just tile our windows. And with the same set of vectors selected, we're going to now look at finishing the part using a smaller tool to get in at all the detail. So with those vectors selected, let's go over to the 3D Finish toolpath. Then we could go and select a tool from the tool database. In this case, I'd like to use the 8th inch ball nose. Press OK and then we'll just use the Edit options to check over the settings just for this particular toolpath that we're working with. Okay, so you can see the step over, an 8% step over there, that's okay. Check the feed rate, plunge rate, could look at upping that plunge rate. Uh, and so we're just overwriting the values for this particular toolpath if we think that we could cut the material faster than the actual default settings. So I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Okay, then we want to use the selected vectors as our machine limit boundary. Again, zero offset here, we've already offset the vectors that we need to. And then our area machine strategy, okay, so we've got the raster or an offset. Okay, so given the actual shape of the job where we have this border and we've got circles in the actual main face of our sign, I feel that the offset strategy will give me a better finish than if I was to go back and forth using the raster option. So let's use the offset strategy here and then what we could do is we could come down, give that a name, I'm just going to call that one 3D finish, go ahead, press calculate. Okay, 
so a lot more detail to work out here so it's going to take that little bit longer than the roughing pass okay and there we have our toolpath there okay so let's just go ahead and preview that toolpath okay, and we can see how that part looks if we just maximize the 3d view we can see that we've pretty much got all of the detail that's required from our model there. Now if you felt that the preview didn't look correct or not enough details being picked up then you could go back and alter the settings of the tool and the toolpath itself and then just recalculate the toolpath and then review the preview until you're happy with what you can see here in the preview toolpaths. So let's just put that in Z and we'll just close out of that preview tool pass. And again, let's come over and tile our windows. So now we can look at V carving the magic beans text. So with that text selected, let's go over to the V carve tool path. So we need to set our start depth. So that's going to start on top of our material surface, which is at zero. So we'll keep that set to zero there. And we need to specify a tool. Now in this case I've got a 120 degree V-bit tool. This is a specialist sign making tool and I'd like to use that to cut the magic beans text. So let's use the select option here and then we'll try and find that in the tool database. So you can see here I actually don't have that in my tool database. That isn't a problem. I can look at creating a brand new tool or I could copy an existing tool. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that 90 degree, one and a quarter V bit, and we're going to copy that. So you'll see it's copied that, created that copy there. And all I need to do is just change things like the name, the diameter, the angle, if I needed to. So over here, we know that we're working with a 120 degree V bit. Okay. Now the shank is actually one and a quarter, so we'll keep that diameter as one and a quarter there angle for this 120 and we could just go ahead apply that and you'll see it me this message has appeared telling me that the pass depth of half an inch is greater than the tool maximum cutting depth okay and this is worked out by the angle of the tool and how wide the actual tool is and so the maximum pass depth for this is actually 0.361 so we'll just OK that and we're just going to change the pass depth here. So we're just going to change that to 0.3. Now if you are going to run this you need to ensure that the settings are appropriate for your own setup. Okay, So we'll just apply that there and then we could go ahead and press OK. And then we'll just give that a name, we'll call that one VCarve Text and then simply press Calculate. And we can see the actual toolpath there in the 3D view. So let's preview that toolpath. Okay, so we can see that text looks good. I like the effect that we've got there. Let's just put that in C and then we'll look at running our final toolpath, which is the cutout toolpath or the profile toolpath. So let's just go into the 2D view. I'm just going to zoom in so we can select the actual boundary of our model. And it's this vector that we're going to use to run our profile pass. So let's just zoom to the limits there. Okay, so we've got that vector selected over to the profile toolpath. Okay, start depth zero, cut depth one. We're going to cut all the way through the material to cut our sign out. We're going to actually use this quarter inch end mill. You can see it's doing that in four passes, and so we can see that that pass depth is at a quarter of an inch. That's okay for the material that I'm using. Machine vectors, we're going to machine them on the outside, so we cut on the outside of that vector. And if we come down, there's various advanced options here. If we wanted to, we could add tabs to our part to hold it within our material block. And we could just go ahead and give that a name. I'm just going to call this one Profile Cutout, and then simply go ahead and press Calculate. You can see that toolpath there represented by those blue lines and then we could go ahead and preview that toolpath maximize the 3d view there put it in the ISO view double click on the waste material and we can see we've got our finished sign okay so I really like the way that that looks there now if you wasn't happy with the preview that you've got you could go back and edit the individual toolpaths 
recalculate those toolpaths and then preview the toolpaths here in the preview toolpaths form until you're actually happy with the preview that you can see here. Okay, now as I'm happy with that, we could simply close that down and we could think about saving out those toolpaths. And so to save out your toolpaths, use the save toolpath option here and we'll look at saving out the profile holes, 3D roughing, you can see they both use the same tool so we can actually output these visible toolpaths to one file. Search for the appropriate post processor that you use for your machine and then you could simply select it. You only have to select this once and then go ahead and save out the toolpath. Choose an appropriate name, maybe include the actual name of the tool that you're using, that can be quite helpful. And then press save and then you could do the same for the other three toolpaths and then you could just simply take those toolpaths over to your CNC machine to cut them out. And so that really completes this tutorial on how to create the toolpaths for the Magic Beans coffee sign. So let's go ahead and save this file. So I go to File, Save As, and in the Project folder, we're going to call this one Magic Beans Coffee Sign 3D Toolpaths. Press Save, and you can access that from the Project folder.